Hi, this is David Abanak Turtle, continuing with a review of the CFA, and today a focus on the three classifications for marketable securities, and they are trading portfolio, available for sale, and held to maturity. The illustration here to show the differences is the assumption that we have a company that invests $100 million in a 6% semi-annual coupon bond. And then we go forward in time six months and two things happen. First, that bond pays a coupon. That coupon is going to be $3 million because it's 6% times 100 or $6 million per year, but it's paying semi-annually, so every six months it's $3 million. The second thing is the assumption that interest rates decline, so the value or price of our bond is going to go up by $2 million. So now the three classifications are here. Right in the middle is the default assumption generally that the instrument is available for sale. And then we have the extremes, more or less, here. On the left, a bond that would be as part of the trading book or trading portfolio. And on the right here, a bond or instrument that was held to maturity. Now, what about the coupon that's paid on the bond? The $3 million coupon gets the same treatment under all three classifications. And that is to say, notice right here, as part of a line in the income statement, interest income is recognized for the coupon of $3 million under all three. Similarly, that's going to grow assets here classified as deposits. And it will also be classified to grow equity, the balance sheet balances, as part of retained earnings. 3-3, three, three, and there's a 3 in here. So the coupon is the, given the same treatment under all three classifications. What's different is our second assumption here that in six months, interest rates decline, price of the bond goes up. First consider the trading portfolio classification. Now in this case, the price of the bond goes up by $2 million, and because we're classified under trading portfolio, this is the only classification of the three in which the unrealized gain on that bond is recognized on the income statement. That's the plus $2 million here. That $2 million will grow assets here classified under or assigned to uh, unrealized gain of $2 million. And it will also grow retained earnings. So that five here is a combination of the three million coupon and the two million unrealized gain. So under the trading portfolio, the mark to market increase in the value of the bond is an unrealized gain that's recognized on the income statement and therefore increases net income and also grows the balance sheet. What about available for sale? Well, in this case, the $2 million price increase on the bond is not recognized on the face of the income statement, but it does grow the balance sheet. So it does add plus two to assets and it adds plus two to other comprehensive income. Other comprehensive income is that classification under equity that by definition is the change in equity that's not recognized on the income statement. So under available for sale, the fact that the bond increased by two million as unrealized gain is not recognized on the face of the income statement, but does grow the other comprehensive income and therefore does get reflected on balance sheet equity and balance sheet assets. Finally, the held to maturity is straightforward in the sense that if this is the classification, this unrealized gain on the bond of $2 million is nowhere to be found. It is not recognized on the income statement nor does it grow assets, nor does it contribute to retained earnings or other comprehensive income. In other words, that unrealized gain does really not show up on the financial statements under this held to maturity classification. So those are the three, and again, available for sale is generally the default assumption. This is David Harper of the Bionic Turtle. Thanks for your time.